Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm going to talk about the resource revolution and the uh, Silius resource and grid packages based on API platform internals. So uh, Jacob talked about a new component on the Silius stack, which is a monorepository which Silius agnostic packages. Intra he introduced the Silius Twig events, and now uh, I will present the, resource the existing resource and grid, but the new version will be on the Sidious stack. Uh, my name is Loïc Fremont. I'm French. I'm a technical expert at Akawaka, a Sidious core team member, and monophonic creator. We talked about a little about Akawaka, the company I'm working for. What is monophony and why use it? And we will focus on the main topic of my uh, talk, which is the new Sidious resource system. And we'll see how to manage to have some Sidious resource without doctrine driver. And what's next for the future of these packages. So Akawaka, we are experts for your web projects, and, see, and we are Silius partner. We have uh, a lot of uh, Silius experts in our company. We use clean architecture techniques with uh, DDD uh, for projects that stand the test of time. We use PHP unit and BIAD for a true quality approach. And uh, we have efficient industrialization adapted to your projects, a contract, a fixed price, price basis to create or to great teams and work in complete collaboration. Now, what is monophony and why use it? I think monophony is a little brother of Silius because you have the same DX you, you have in Silius e-commerce, but for any Symfony project. It allows you to bootstrap a modern application based on Symfony and leveraging Silius bundles and components, so especially the resource and grid helping you to focus more on what truly matters to your use case. To set up the project, uh, you have, enfin, it uses Flex to copy some basic features into your project. Um, the installation comes with an admin pack, admin pack. It contains a minimal dashboard and some basic cruds to manage administrators and customers. All these features can be customized, improved, or simply removed. Here is a grid of administrator. Who knows what is a grid? If you know what is a grid, raise your hand. Almost everyone, cool. <laughs> Basically, a grid is an object which contains the table data, the filters, and the action button, such as the edit, the delete, and the create button. And the filters is there. Uh, optionally, you can install an API, an API pack, which uh, uses API platform. Uh, it sets up some basic features uh, copied with Flex into your project. So we, we have um, a customer registration, an app user registration, and um, endpoints for, to, for forgetting password or something like that. So, uh, you can customize this first endpoint because uh, uh, they are now into your project with this API pack. API pack. Now, <laughs> let's continue with the main topic of uh, my talk. So, this is the resource bundle. Past use case. So, current use case for you, but now it's past. <laughs> um, it was OG originally created to make CRUD with doctrine entities and to avoid writing controllers that all do the same thing. That was the thing. Now, we want a better developer experience a lot. We are not YAML developers. We want a better DX. We have now PHP attribute or something like that, and we want something better for newcomers and new developers and young people uh, struggling with uh, serious technical packages. We now want something better. Uh, we want to customize a persistence layer, uh, such as using an ERP or Elasticsearch, for example, uh, and we want to use it in our DDD project. So, <laughs> 
Uh, to fulfill these requirements, I've created a new Silius resource system. Basically, it's based on API platform internals, and we can thank uh, this project and the core team member for the inspiration. Uh, to make that happen, I've submitted about 120 pull requests. So it was a lot of work for me, but also for uh, Lukas Kroschel at Takawaka, uh, at Commerce Reverse, sorry. So thank you for him for all the reviews. Uh, a new feature that I want to introduce is the Deflow template directory configuration. In Silius admin panel, there are some common templates for CRUD pages. These default templates with the metadata from your operation to build the patch title. The create and update templates are using a form and submit buttons, and the index template contains a grid. That will simplify a lot the operation com configuration, because you will be able to skip set definition in each resource metadata. You, um, it will be simple to configure uh, it then into your operation because you can just skip this template directory configuration. So, to register a resource, uh, wait, to, uh, to register an entity as a serious resource, it is now so simple. Uh, before, you was using a YAML configuration uh, to configure it into the bundle. Now, you just need this as resource PHP PHP attribute. So this is simple. This is from a new metadata uh, namespace. And then this will be registered automatically as a new Silius resource, which has uh, a new alias. By default, it is app.book. Now, <laughs> let's configure some CRUD operation for that new book resource. Uh, then we just need an index operation to to add a list of books. So we can uh, use the operation arguments into the as resource with the new index operation, or yeah, from metadata, and, or we can just add a new attribute below the as resource one. Two way to do that. So you can choose what do you prefer. It will configure this route by default uh, with name app book index, get method, and books as pass. You can customize all this, it, to all this configuration uh, with argument into your index attribute. You have a Silius debug resource uh, uh, command. It, um, it, it has been improved to uh, dump the new metadata. The, the operation metadata. So we have a lot of things here, but I uh, need your attention on the new provider here. We have a, a default provider, which is to um, to handle the state, for, uh, the request from Symfony. So up. now we want to attach a grid into the index operation. So we will make a grid using the grid maker command using maker bundle. So it will create something like that. Uh, so we have a book grid, which extends an abstract grid and implements a resource world grid interface because we handle a resource in our grid. This is the book name, or the grid name, which is a book. Uh, the book is sorted by name by default. We add a string field uh, name attribute and the author of the book with a string field too. Uh, all these fields are sortable. So this is the new grid PHP, which uh, has been introduced two years ago, I think. We, you can already uh, use it in Sirius. Uh, and we plan to migrate the, uh, the existing grid in, uh, in Sirius e-commerce part, I mean on panel parts, uh, soon, I think, because uh, there are already uh, some pull requests for that. Um, use this grid for your index operation. It's so simple. You just need to uh, define the grid into the index operation. You can use the fully classified class name on your grid, or just use the name of the grid. The two uh, two way works. So 
we can deb uh, you can look at the new provider here. It is now related to the grid. So we, if we define a grid, it is a new provider. Yeah, so simple. Does that work? With just this configuration. <laughs> so we have a list of books which is paginated. So now to add or editing a book, we will use a create and update operation. So we can define the same form tip for the two operations directly into the as resource PHP attribute. But we can uh, decide to um, use another uh, form type for the update operation and put it in the update uh, attribute if you want to, or if we need to. Then we have the create and update operation just below the index one. And now the two new routes are configured as this by default with app book create, app book update. Yes, with this method by default and with this pass by default. Uh, let's see how to add uh, the, these action buttons on the grid itself. So we have to add the create, the create button into the main action group and the update button into the item action group. The item action group is for each row, for each book. Uh, we, with this is the, um, uh, I, what did I say? The, the item action group. And the main action group is for the create button on the top. So to add a book, we, are, we still have some validation. That's OK. That works. And we can add a book and be informed that the book has been successfully created. Done, like before. Editing a boot, we can rename this book, and that works too. Cool. Removing a book. Um, so basically, uh, this is something you, you already uh, use with the resource controller. This still works with this new uh, resource metadata system, with delete and bulk delete operation. So now we use delete and bulk delete. So two new routes, uh, sorry, two new routes, delete and bulk delete one. Okay. So let's add this delete action into the item action group and the bulk delete operation into the bulk action group. This is an another action group. And now we have a new delete button here. We are a model confirmation. And we have now, uh, when we choose uh, several books, we have the delete uh, button enabled, and we can remove several books in a row. Publishing books. Um, in the resource controller, there was also an apply, st uh, an apply state machine action. So I decided to backport that. And we have an apply state machine transition operation too. So it uses the state machine uh, with Winzu, but also with Symfony workflow in, uh, indeed. So you just need to configure the transition uh, for, for this operation. So I use here um, a publish transition to publish the books, to pass it from a draft state to a published state. It will configure this route like this by default, so publish uh, the transition name in the root name, of course, and uh, on the pass. But you can customize, of course. <laughs> So uh, I just add uh, um, in, in information of the state of the books into the grid, just to, to have a look uh, on the current state. And we configure the directory of the, of the templates to use for, for, a, for a book state. So if the book is on draft, it will use this template, tweak template. So uh, it will be uh, blue and with inbox icon like this. So here we have the information. Now we add the, um, the action button to uh, publish that book. So we can use the apply transition action, which is exists now into uh, Silius Grid. And we uh, use the name as we publish as name, the, the route to apply with arguments, etc. And now we have a new publish button. 
And that's okay. Now the book has been published as we use in resource controller. The new resource Silius uh, data system does not use the resource controller anymore. But don't be afraid because the two routing systems are working together. In the, in the alpha version, you can switch uh, at a moment for a new route. You can use the new operation data system, so metadata system, and still use the resource controller if you want, if you need. Publishing books with custom processor. We, we will do the same um, without using the, um, the apply state machine transition operation. We will use an update operation instead and use a custom processor like we do with a PI platform. So I define the same method to, be, uh, to have the same route. So we short publish a short name and we define the processor with fully classified classified class name. And we don't want to, we don't have any form, so we don't need to validate the resource. So the root will be the same as before. We have the same root, na the same root name, the same path, etc. But we can customize uh, what we do in this uh, processor. So uh, it implements a processor interface, which uh, looks like the, AP the API platform one. So uh, when you use Silius, uh, you, you, you also have an API platform. So you, will, you, um, you have to be careful about the processor to, to implement. Yeah, we inject the workflow from Symfony, and we inject the default uh, processor, which is configured when you have a doctrine entity as a serious resource. Up. So, you will implement. You will need to implement this process method. So we can check into the workflow from Symfony if we can publish this book and then just apply manually the uh, the transition. And then we use, we can use the persist processor from Doctrine to persist the data into your database. And now you still have the publish button, same route, and it works too. Then <laughs> we want to, to go further and publish many books in a row. So we'll use a bulk update operation, which is new. This is uh, uh, not working with resource controller, this, so uh, this is con totally new. Uh, so we we'll use a bulk update operation with bulk publish as short name, and we can reuse our published book processor, if, even if this is for one book. Custom bulk processor for batch processing with Safari Messenger could be uh, implemented later to, uh, to, ma to manage that, but for now, for each row you, s you have selected, uh, it will use, uh, for each book, the same processor. Up. In a loop, of course. Up. So, now we have this bulk publish root name with method, yeah, okay. And we define into the grid the new action with this apply transition. We define the route to call, and that's all. We have a new publish button on the bulk option, uh, on the bulk main group, on the bulk action group, sorry. So if we select several books, we can publish several books. Yeah, okay. Now, Let's talk about the Silius resource without Doctrine Driver. We want no Doctrine Driver, retrieve data with providers, and persist data with processors. So, as an example, I will use a simple CSV file with a new resource, which, I which is board games. So, let's try to, to manage this resource via this this only CSV file. Let's go. Uh, we configure a new board game resource and we say that no driver to use, so no doctrine driver to use. It will need to implement the resource and of course, and this requires this 
this uh, get ID method for now. Maybe we will remove it uh, somewhere in the future, but for now you will need to implement that. So, board game resource, we had uh, an index operation with a new grid. And we configure that grid for board games. So, we define the resource to handle. And this is particular. Um, the grid bundle has its, its own provider system. Uh, it's related to Doctrine uh, 2, but it's not related, to, uh, it's not handled by the resource package itself. It has its own provider. Okay, so let's configure the provider here into the grid packages. So we, I implement here a new board game grid provider. And we will see that. This is a board game grid provider which implements a data provider interface which is from grid package. And it requires this get data method. It's so simple because it just have uh, two arguments, which is the grid configuration and the parameters. Um, basically, it's a symphony request parameters. Uh, and we, you can return whatever you want. So now I choose a page of Fanta because um, the resource will um, be informed that the object returned is a page of Fanta and can handle this object. But you can return a resource grid view or grid view uh, if, you, if you need. Yeah, so uh, we read the, um, the file from the data. We, and then we transform uh, the data into uh, an array and inject that with resource, new board game resource. So we have now an array of board game resource. And we return a page on Fanta based with an array adapter of the data. Yes. Uh, so I let you uh, the get file data method, which is uh, so simple with a remap and str get CSV, so, so simple to transform the, the CSV file into uh, an array. Now we have a grid with our board game CSV file. Win. Win, and the pagination works too. So what, what left? <laughs> uh, adding board games. And to add board games, we will use, uh, as before, we will use the same form type for the create and update operation. So we, configure, we can configure it into the as resource PHP attribute. And we will use a processor to persist the data, the, the new board game, into the CSV file. This is very, very simple, you will see. So we check, uh, we, we use uh, the correct uh, resource inside our processor. This, so this uh, will only be un, uh, able to, to handle the board game resource. And we open the CSV file and put our new board game resource into the end of the file. Very, very simple. And we can add a book with validation. And then the book has just been created at the end of the CSV file and appears on the grid. Win two. Now, edit the books. Real simple too. We need a provider to retrieve the board game from the CSV file and a processor to update it. So, the provider, simple too, we can, ah, okay. We introduced uh, um, a new context uh, on API, API platform. It is an array on a resource package, found resource bundle, it is an object. We have a context, uh, a new context object. So we can retrieve uh, that uh, the, the request from Symfony directly uh, with the request option. And we, this, this is now the request attribute from Symfony. So we, we can get the attribute from uh, the root. Oh. And we read, uh, we retrieve from the CSV file the, the current board game we, we, are, we are searching for. And if we, uh, if, if we have to handle the net found, if, uh, wait, <laughs> or return the new board game resource. To update uh, the board game into the CSV file, we have to, uh, to update the CSV file here. We open it, check for the, row, uh, the, um, the wanted row, and um, update the information. 
and then rewrite then uh, that information into the CSV file. So now we can rename a book with Stone Age to L'Age de Pierre, which is the name in uh, French of the board game. And now it works. Oh, deleting board games, easy. We can reuse the board game item provider that we use into the update operation. So cool. And implement a new processor to delete the board game into the CSV file from the CSV file. So check the resource and delete. So open the file and set the board game we want to remove. Reopen the data, uh, well, rewrite the data into the CSV file. Easy, and it works too. But <laughs> we have um, a, new, a new issue to handle by ourselves, sorting data. Because uh, we use um, a custom board game provider, which uh, will handle with CSV file, we, we will need to, to, to do that by ourselves. So, as you can see, the name uh, is sortable, and it is ordered by name by default. So, this is not working. Tickets to ride, Seven Wonders, Puerto Rico, Azul. This is not work. But, that will be easy, don't panic. <laughs> In the board game, provider, so in the grid data provider, we just need, we, we, we have the current sorting by retrieving uh, that from the parameters arguments. So parameters get sorting, we ret will retrieve the current sorting of the data. So simple. So we can handle this with um, a simple string compare. Huh? To compare the strings, they said easy. So with ask, we sort in, a, in that way, and with desk, we sort with the opposite way. And now, your board game grid as a, is okay. Village, uh, on desk, village, Tigris and Euphrat, tickets ride, the voyages of Marco Polo, this is okay. And with ask, Seven Wonders, Azul, Carcassonne, Cartagena, it now works. But there is, Another thing to handle, another issue, default sorting. Is it sorted by name, really? No, we don't have uh, any query parameter here, so it has to be uh, sorted by name. And ticket to rise and wonders, Puerto Rico, Azul, that does not work. Oh, how can I handle that? Simple, the current sorting is on parameters and the grid configuration contains this default sorting, so easy. So if we have a current or the default in the grid configuration. And now our green works. Seven Wonders, Azul, Carcassonne, Cartagena, Calus, we win. Now, let's focus on what next uh, will, uh, what will be happen on the new resource and grid. So uh, this is this has been released uh, in June, I think, uh, on, alf on alpha, that one. We need now to stabilize that, uh, that, that system. So it's important. Uh, we, want, we also want to reunit a bundle and components into the same package. So it will be easier to maintain and uh, it, it will be better. We, we want to, to use the same uh, architecture as we have into the API platform core package. And we want to remove that kernel event. We will see later. Uh, my colleague, Valentin Silvestre, um, are working on that. And we want to use a PHP configuration. We will see that later. Uh, so, we need to bundle components into the same component. Basically, before we have a Silius bundle, resource bundle namespace and Silius component resource namespace, and after, we will have a just a Silius resource namespace. Uh, I did a, a lot of a bis, um, background compatibility layer to, to not break your project. <laughs> you can, uh, you can uh, be happy with that. <laughs> so, uh, remove kernel events here. Is, 
Here is the documentation from the API platform, and we use, um, for now, something like that. So we have a validate listener, we have a read listener. This is uh, based on a kernel event listener. So we will remove that. They already did into API platform uh, 3.2, I think. It, it has been removed. And they are used provider and processor instead of that. Because we are based on that internal, we can do the same. On Silius shop, um, there, <laughs> here, I uh, configure a lot of routes uh, for the administration panel, and you will need to customize uh, them. So maybe it could be uh, better for them to use external PHP configuration to um, configure that uh, resource operation. So that's not finished. Huh? That's just an idea to uh, to have to, to configure that operation into an external PHP configuration file. So let's add a resource configurator, and then we can use the resource the existing resource metadata system, which is already the same as you use as a PHP attribute on your doctrine entity. So you will have the same developer experience. You can configure the resource prefix. And you have the PHP attribute here, index, create, update, delete, that I shown before. And we can add another resource here, which is a subscription with only one operation, which is an index. And on API platform, I could contribute to, to add this same system with external PHP uh, file for the new API platform resource metadata system 2 with an API resource configurator and with API resource with resource, root prefix if we need, and the operation, get collection, post, put, delete, which is the, um, the HTTP method uh, for REST, for the, your API. API. Ah. <laughs> That was a bit longer to, to load. Uh, That's just cooperation. We, we, we have been inspired by, by their work, and now we can contribute to improve uh, the API platform core, too. So let's contribute. <laughs> now, uh, the two routing uh, system, as I mentioned before, are working together. So don't panic. It will not break your existing admin administration panel. <laughs> you can you can switch uh, on uh, on your, the routing system you you need for your for any resource. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have some questions? Yes. Uh, uh, will, will there be any integration of a resource bundle with API platform? Because we have some clients, uh, some customers that uh, have a need to have a traditional admin panel, just like you showed us uh, now. But uh, in some cases, there is a need to uh, create or update some resources via a API. So uh, what are the plans of that integration? With API platform, with the API platform to customize the operation, you need, you want to customize your operation from your API platform endpoints. No, that's not the question. No. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, the I thought about. Uh, well, you showed uh, us how to create a administration panel uh, with a graphical user interface, but sometimes there is a need to also. Uh, for example, create specific resources uh, in API. So are there any plans to uh, add some additional maybe configuration to resource bundle uh, to also make uh, API pl platform endpoints? Uh, okay, indeed. Uh, there are already um, some op new operations. I don't, did not mention that, but there are also uh, post operation and put operation and get collection operation as we have into API platform. But this is not to fight with API platform. But you can use this, uh, this attribute, this new operation, to, to configure a small API if, API if you want. But um, 
it will it has been introduced to um, to use uh, some AJAX um, some some dynamic into your administration panel only, not for the shop and with API. Just use API platform for for endpoints and uh, resource for the administration panel. I think that's better. Is that answer your concern? <laughs> your question? Yeah. Another one? <laughs> Don't be shame. <laughs> Lukas. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, that's a good question. Um, I think we could release it at the beginning of uh, 12 and uh, where 2024. Uh, 12 and 24. <laughs> uh, I think it's possible to do this because the remove kernel events is already uh, is easy. I think to to fix. So I, I can be, well, I can be optimistic and then uh, 2020, 2024 is possible at the beginning, January. <laughs> yeah, Re review now are faster because we are now more people into the core team. Uh, Lucas uh, can sleep a, a little <laughs> now. <laughs> so it was a lot of work between each other, each other, but now we have more uh, reviewers in that school. So I think it, it will be possible to, to release this to release that soon. But you can already try it on your any Symfony uh, Silius project. It will work, it will not break. So you can use the alpha version and test the new operation routing system. Okay? So let's go. <laughs> let's try. <laughs> Anyone? Thanks for the talks. I have a question because it's a special case to, we have to manage grids. Can we have um, many grids in the same page? If yes, how do you manage the request parameters to manage this multiple pagination, etc.? Yeah, indeed, uh, I, I did some uh, some uh, some pages uh, like that uh, with Monophony uh, in the past when I was to Mobizel at Mobizel, but that's not easy. Um, to be honest, I have to try this uh, a little because this is a common use case. Um, so we'll try. <laughs> Maybe with uh, the. Um, well, maybe it will be possible to share to share that information. Mm. Maybe, yeah. right. Right. I think it, it it could be possible like that. Yes, but nested nested. Uh, so request parameter for one grid and request parameter for another grid. So I think it would be uh, harder to use because you you have to do it yourself. You have to do by yourself. Anyone else? Great, thanks. <laughs>